found that in order to get full coverage on YouTube, you have to have copyright free music because I'm all about getting that bag. You cannot get monetized. If you have anything that resembles possible copyright infringement. Therefore, I had to change my impro, intro. Hey y'all, this is 2022, a new year, a new time for podcasting. And I had to get a funky beat to basically express what I want to put out in the atmosphere. And this is Tenfro. I'm back, back, back again. I'm a social critic, thought leader, but I'm more recluse, reclusive and cranky. But I want to read, watch, cook, and just share all things that make me happy. My wish is that this increases the curiosity of the listening audience to come back for more and to share with friends. I want one million unique listeners and downloads. I want creative quality Millie to be known around the world. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. So if you're listening to me on YouTube, click subscribe. Tip a sister. And I just want to thank you guys for listening. And enjoy and get your bop on. Copyright free. that's how it goes my glow up continues i'm up to 15.8k downloads and rising hopefully by the end of this week or hopefully maybe even by the end of the day i'll be well over 16,000 um downloads i mean i see you all in all the states united states i see you in uh, india i see you in germany i see you in mexico I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the opportunity to entertain. My glow up, my glow up. And also, I wanted to just do a little bit of COVID news. I'm actually going to put my first COVID, positive COVID test. I was, thought I was well on my way to becoming uh, one of those people that just never contracts it, but I don't think that's a possibility. I was at home all last week, and I started coughing and feeling kind of sick by Friday. And my sister had been feeling ill prior to that with post-nasal drip and sinus pressure. So I just thought, you know, I heard on the news today that they were going to stop the shipment of uh, the free COVID testing from the government. <clears throat> and so I said, yeah, why not go ahead and do the test? That bitch came back po- so positive that it started turning well before the 15 minutes is up. So I didn't believe it, so I did it twice because two come in a package. So I'm currently home, quarantined, and I'm on Paxlovid, which is actually a combination of two drugs. I'm hoping this is the worst I'm going to feel with the ear pressure and a little bit of a headache and a scratchy throat and a cough. I'm just hoping I'm not going to get into full-blown COVID. I think I actually have an app on my phone where I can get test my um, oxygen level. Um, and my sister also tested positive, um, but she's different because of her um, other health conditions. So no air horns for that. The Rona is still out here, still fucking with people. Um, but again, it's nothing to mess with. I'm just very fortunate that I not only am fully vaccinated with Pfizer, I have been boosted twice. I'm just waiting um, to get the Omicron booster that they say is going to be available hopefully by this fall. 
because I don't wish this on anybody, um, especially if you're in treatment uh, for anything, really. Um, so y'all just continue to be careful, continue to wear your mask, continue to wash your hands. And being a recluse helps because it took me two years, almost three, to get become positive. So I don't know. I don't know if this is going to change my mind from going outside because now that I've been out there, I like the freedom of moving around, but I don't, but there's just so many, I'm looking at my hands now to make sure I don't got no, didn't pick up monkey pox on a sneak tip. But anyways, I um, like being outside. I like being around other people that make me feel safe. So the idea of going back to being alone or by myself is not very appealing. So with that said, uh, I'm going to become really intimate again with door dashers. <clears throat> my smell has not gone away. My taste has not gone away. It's just kind of altered. If I can still tell you guys to get your shots Get your shots, wear your mask, wash your freaking hands because that's what's going to keep and get boosted because that's what's going to keep you from getting severe COVID. And that's all I got to say about that. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when sky's gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Good morning. I am casting or podcasting from my location here in Sandbridge, Virginia. I have been PTO, have been really enjoying my vacation with my dog, Ethel. Um, I've been just having a great time. I realized when I am at home, I have no reason to create podcasts or to be creative because weirdly, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I don't know uh, if it's so weird. It's just that I'm finding um, just a lot of pleasure and happiness right where I am in the moment. And I've been in the moment for the last few days, but I felt compelled to not only enjoy a cup of coffee seaside, but also get my mind right because we are getting headed to the preliminary hearing uh, for the trial of my father and a young woman's murder here in Virginia Beach. Um, I don't know how my mind is about it. I know I have a lot to unpack with my uh, counselor or therapist. Um, because I think I'm moving into um, another realm, realizing that I really am not alone, can't blame something from a, an emotional standpoint of what someone did not have and could not pour into me and my decisions going forward. And they've always been this way have always been, how am I going to operate? How am I going to proceed and interact with people? So we're rounding out the completion of settling the rest of my father's estate. I'm very glad about that. And dealing with people honestly and, and gaining happiness for not a whole bunch of stuff, but just, you know, what it is and how I want to progress and how I want to be. I'm just happy that I'm learning a different way and, and gaining um, access to wonderful relatives. So there you go. But anyways, so I think I'm going to dedicate this first part of the show to unpacking feelings, um, regrets, um, and it's also a bit of um, not throwing any shade, but getting uh, a head start into um, the public or popular zeitgeist. 
on the 17th of this month, as my glow up continues, bam, 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 forgot about that. 13.7 downloads and counting. I see y'all in Great Britain. I see y'all in Mexico. I see y'all in France. I see y'all in Germany. Thank you for listening. Bam, 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 bam. So anyways, but on 17th of this month, uh, the Hollywood Reporter did a cover story about Wendy Williams. And respectfully, I be- what I've re- read so far is they have basically pre- just reported the facts. And it was like there was a timeline and there was an insider basically spoke to them on the record. We have been privy to, or the public has been privy to, the struggle of William Williams in the in her latest years. We know she has she um, fainted on her show, um, but now it appears that she is having a mental health crisis. And this is a great lead into because I'm going to break down or start to break down. And this is also going to be my read uh, for this week's episode, too. It's just popular culture and it's a magazine, The Hollywood Reporter. Um, She we've seen her health struggles over the last 12 years. We've seen her go through a very bitter um, divorce trifling husband, extracurricular kids, her own difficult pregnancy. So we've seen all of this played out in media, but now we see as she is appears to be unraveling. People are have been asking, especially over the past year, how you doing, her catchphrase to herself. When she was supposed to start the 13th season, Let's just go back. I don't think Wendy Williams, her intent was to never stop her show. She was supposed to continue for a number more years. And this is what I think. And then it appears that her mental health and and her illness also took its toll because back in September of last year she was supposed to do um a what was this she was basically supposed to do like um a promotion start of a promotional tour she was supposed to have a staff meeting and had rehearsed her and she started and they she was fine at eight o'clock but by the 10 o'clock meeting this was almost like you clock in you got a job and then by 11 o'clock they calling y'all in and everybody's getting fired but this was worse than that it seems she just became uh was a blithering muddled crazy person she was rambling she says i'm fine i'm going to be fine and what are you saying and then she just became completely coherent before the feed was cut it was last two and they said two and a half to three minutes and it wasn't pretty um and everybody was kind of freaked out because they thought she was basically stroking out right in front of them and with good reason She had never, it seems to be, from a behind the scenes and and people that have worked with her for decades said this is, that she's never been like this. But it appears, if you check the receipts, that when, right when 2017, when she fainted on the show, which I mentioned before, She said she was just overheated, but that wasn't the only incident. It seems that she had been struggling. Her struggles became more apparent basically since 2017, but her first 
on air fainting was a prelude to what was to become. She basically, she's, and she's made no struggles, made no an unapologetic about her struggles with substance abuse and staying in a sober facility in 2019 and in a, a high-end rehab in Florida. Um, after she and Kevin Hunter divorce. And we saw a lot of, and we saw most of that going left when uh, during the Wendy Williams story. She's ended up and they've questioned her sobriety, 25 almost, probably too many to count. And but the thing about this crazy staff meeting back in 2021 was she was fine at eight and basically had started after the it seems like the people her handlers left her she had commenced to drink or do some other type of substance. So in less than two hours, um, she was completely blotto. But she had been struggling that entire previous summer, promising people that she was going to be okay. She's been in the doctor's uh, care, but you can't explain all of this by Graves' disease. Um, you can't explain it about her lymphedema. But what I do know is alcohol doesn't mix well with those substances or whatever else that she was taking. And or she's showing Warney's encephalopathy, Warnicky's um, encephalopathy, which is um, secondary to years of severe substance abuse. Either way, she has not, it was not on the men. And therefore, her show went on for through that season without her. And that means her namesake show was hosted finally by a great hostess, um, Sherry Shepard. And then she was, and then it was abruptly ended. So then what happened? It appears that she continued to struggle with delirium and going back and forth doing some quarantines and then she actually came down with COVID at one point. So during the quarantine, they were able to put a, or cobble together a guest host plan of attack uh, while she convalesced um, and then it started stretching out uh, with Sherry Shepard um, continuing uh, many, many moons longer than what they expected. But she was, but she was doing such a great job that I think she was offered or went into development her own show, not to replace Wendy or take over that show, but just to take over that time slot. Because with all of this back and forth and no updates, it did not appear that she was in any condition, Wendy Williams, that is, to come back um, to take over um, her show of that was of her namesake. Um, she went on with, they talk, go on to talk about a famous uh, uh, beefs with the likes of Little Kim um, and Whitney Houston, and she was a shock jock, and she outed people um, on her days on the radio, but she created her own world, and the product that she gave us for a number of years was looked at about everyone. And 
and the list goes on with people that covered for her. Um, she was actually known to be really tough on celebrities, but it was hard not only to book celebrities to for her to interview because she was so tough on them, it was became apparent that it was also very tough to get people to cover for her. So Sherry Chef fit the bill. They go on to say, which I found very sad, how they had the, it was like Groundhog's Day when they were trying to explain to her that her show had been canceled. And it was like every single time this went on and on right up until the show was pulled um, that it was like they kept having the same conversation over and over again, but she wasn't retaining it all. She sounded like she was encephalopathic, made worse by continued binge drinking, which I think um, was very sad. And also her new manager, who actually is a jeweler, was saying that she has so many things that are in the works, but if she can't even retain her short-term memory as well as sounds like her long-term memory seems to be shot. And if she doesn't start, stop drinking, what is going to happen? Like she's supposed to be opening a restaurant and a podcast, but she appears to be in no condition to do any of these things. And there's a sense of finality that you get when you actually read um, this article. I'm cruising through it because um, Demetria L. Lucas did a very fine job um, breaking it down and highlighting some of the best points. I'll actually um, have a link um, to that podcast because I thought she did an amazing job um, giving the highlights and her feelings. But my feelings are She's going to go out with a fizzle and she should not do podcasting may be where she can actually land given her days um, on the radio and she doesn't need if she's in as bad a shape as I think she is and she is as incoherent as she appears to be in this article, there is no reason that she needs to be um, have any video going forward until they find and reverse what she's going on. If she stops drinking, she gets sober, stays sober, then she can do the podcast maybe, but she is definite, doesn't appear to me by the way this article sounds that she's in any condition and we don't want that, Wendy. I probably won't, I probably won't um, be checking for the Wendy Williams experience. I only, once it does drop, and uh, if I hear any other podcasters uh, talking about it, I may tune in, but I'm good, y'all. I don't need to see her unravel. I don't really need to hear her demise. I'm, I'm okay with not listening to gibberish. I'm coming up to the end of my, my entire vacation and I haven't had difficulty or lack of topics to talk about. Um, this is the first time I've been able or I've come to Virginia Beach, partially vacation, partially um, to tie up the rest of the business of my father's estate. And the preliminary trial um, was yesterday. And I added that dumbass as donkey of the day. Um, instead of a speedy trial, he's going to insist to have his day in court even though at the hurt of the first victim's family and my family, he will go on the forever donkey list. I'm just going to make, he's going to be the donkey. The donkey now is Cola Bill. 
I don't want any pictures of him, a reminder of his eyes. I just, I'm good. He's just a donkey. Also, in further black, bad black news and trials, uh, R. Kelly's trial has started in Chicago. And I'm only speaking on this because the young girl that he uh, sexually exploited uh, for sport back in 2008 when she was 14, she has been granted immunity and he and she's uh, agreed to testify against his organization. She also goes on to say how she was pressured by him. They were flown out of um, the country to the Bahamas and they she continued to be pressured to deny all allegations of sexual molestation because again he was 30 she was 14 no consent her parents should also be on trial because basically they would drop her off at the studios uh with the grown man who does that basically she was pimped out by her parents and now all oh, over 30 years later um 20 some excuse me 20 years later she is now testifying and I can't imagine what her life has been like uh, being served up to this pedophile. He's had sex with her hundreds of times. I just, we talk about witness tampering. We talk about not just pedophile, but the whole exploitation of women, how much did her parents get paid to allow that kid to be abused? That's what I want to know. And he basically is never getting out of jail, I don't think. Um, federal charges, local Illinois charges, he just need, they just need to keep him in there. And then the money ran out. Um, Daryl McDavid, who also is being on is on trial for basically aiding and abetting and witness tampering, he himself is going to serve long time a long time too. And I I just the whole thing how they whoever recorded it leaked it they still exploited that girl and how many people watched that tape gleefully and commented on it. It's just, I never saw it. I have no interest in seeing it, but just the pathology of the person recording, the pathology of this 30 year old man exploiting these kids because he could, and the years, everybody knew about it, but nobody did anything to stop it. They tried the legal route, but it took them 30 years to shut it down. And I think that's a despicable in and of itself. But at least he is off the street and not making these confessional songs of his depravity. The end of depravity and the end of the songs, because what he was singing about was his exploits, when you think about it, were the exploits with all of these young women and girls. That's what he was singing about. I don't know if it came out of his own abuse because it looks like he was severely sexually abused when he was a kid, but also what havoc he wreaked in hundreds of young girls and young's life. That to me is, is despicable, but at least the depravity ends. I've said it multiple times that I uh, get some of my, uh, actually a lot of my um, uh, encouragement and as well as um, why I create and the topics that I talk about on my podcast from other podcasters, not just Ratchet and Respectable, but also I have started um, listening to um, the Young Miami or Carisha Please on Revolt, her podcast. 
Um, in this past week, she interviews Meg the Stallion, who actually just came. She actually just came out on. Um, she was actually on my one of my favorite TV shows, P Valley, um, with as the Tina Snow character. Um, she's um, her body is booming. I don't know if she's had any augmentation or if her behind is just uh, Houston, Texas grown, but I'm here for it. And her and Carisha, I'm I'm assuming are it are is twerking on um, her chair, her interview chair, because there's cocktails involved. Um, I see the promo for the actual podcast itself um, has a side shot of both of them. And if you watch rap shit, you know that her alter ego was that girl. Um, and the stuff that they used to do on Snapchat, I thought I thought was hilarious. Didn't know about that, um, who actually they were. And I think it was through the Reeds um, podcast because Kid Fury, one of the podcasters from that show, host from that show, is originally from Miami. But he hit me to um, City Girls. And that's how I, I besides um, talking to my niece and nephew, um, that's how I stay in tune to a lot of my popular culture, not just through uh, pod, not just through them, but now through these podcasts. But I'm sure it's going to be a booty bump and good time. Um, she interviewed her uh, rap group partner last week. And this week, um, she has Meg the Stallion on. I'm sure there's a lot of lip smacking and lip popping for your listening pleasure. On to, I mentioned P Valley. Evidently, Alarica. Johnson, a.k.a. Haley Keisha Autumn Knight Fenty, has officially left the building, y'all. As for the reasons she says, it was her choice, and she simply felt Haley's story had run its course. Even though um, the character Whisper had intimated that she was carrying twins, uh, she still, she says she it's a wrap for her. I don't know. Maybe she wants to go on to bigger and better things. I don't know if that is a possibility for her. It just makes me sad that she's no longer going to be on um, the show. I'm not as impressed with her as I am with the darker girls like um, Brandy um, and uh, even Little Murder. Of course, I'm in completely in love with Little Murder. Um, the Ernest Teen character, you know, so I'm sad to see her go. She kept shit going. Um, but I am always going to be just fascinated by um, her um, story arc um, because the show has made stars of people that you would never have even considered. But again, I'm here for it. And I'm also just letting you guys know that the um, soundtrack is again, um, will be embedded in the extended the extended uh, podcast notes on WordPress. I'm not going to play um, any of the music because I don't want to get dinged uh, for copyright infringement, but I encourage everybody um, to stream um, this particular album or collection of songs um, to number one, to the shock of a whole bunch of people because, at, and I'll say this and I keep saying this, the Little Murder character or J. Alphonse Nicholson is not a trap rapper. He actually is still in character as Little Murder as he plays his part. Also, House of Dra House of the Dragon um, 
and I knew I've been saying it wrong, but this is a pre prequel um, to the Game of Thrones series. I'm just all there for, I'm pretty impressed uh, with the, um, so much so that I embedded the trailer um, in this week's episode also. And this, we talk about how rapey the previous, I was told how rapey the previous Game of Thrones was. I only watched the last um, season because it was was its last and it was evidently its worst. Cups um, left in the final shots and didn't get edited out. Um, but it just, it didn't seem as how um, the writing or the action for the last season from what I'm told was off. And I say from what I'm told because I did not watch the previous seven seasons. So, but I'm encouraged to do so because this is set, supposed to be several centuries, several centuries before this particular House of the Dragon. And it also, um, some of the names and the people and relatives you need to know their back. Now we get to know their backstory before they lost all of their dragons. But these dragons I love and are gangster. Um, I think it's dope. And I know that nobody says that anymore, but I'm going to say it. And I'm also going to make sure that I write it um, correctly um, as... Um, uh, my hashtag. It is called House of the Dragon, not them dragons. Um, House of Dragon. Um, that sounds like um, Drag Race uh, or one of the girls or some fashion house. But this is the official prequel of House of the Dragon. It's gangs. It's promising to be a gangster good time, and I'm hope all of y'all are going to be as here for it as I have been. Let's see, what am I going to post? Nope, I am going to use this as a, my podcast uh, feature image. And I hope you guys will take a listen to it and, and let me know what you think. I'm going to probably end up embedding um, some type of poll uh, what was your favorite? Who has come making out to be your favorite um, character um, in House of the Dragon? I'm going to have to say the dragon personally, but I'm also very interested in wh what you guys think. I'm going to uh, probably also have a link to the Wikipedia page. Number one, because some of these names are way, way too close together and they ghetto as heck. But um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go on, on, um, go on record to say my favorite character is uh, promising, is shaping up to be, um, the actual. the actual dragon themselves. I mean, come on, gangster dragons rolling around, running S. I love it. <laughs> so again, drop um drop your answer um to the poll. Let me know and I'll reveal um the poll results. Um probably first within the blog, um, but definitely I'll talk about it more on my next um, revisit of the series itself because it's very basically shaping up um, to be and the I don't think the um, what is this the trailer does it justice you gotta watch it is in its entirety it's one more thing and I wish they would just let give me a promo spot this is one another reason um, to subscribe to HBO Max if you don't subscribe to any of um the streaming services besides of course prime video but definitely hbo max and discover plus but 
HBO Max simply for House of the Dragon is a good reason to. And do it as a tax write-off. I'm thinking about several of the streaming services because I basically do a breakdown of the shows. I need to be able to write those off. I'm, and I'm thank you for the remind note to self. Write off your streaming services because I use them um, in commission of the show. <laughs> I wanted to end my broadcast or this recording with just some fresh beats and as a reminder for us to be kind to ourselves, be kind to our minds, and keep creating. I mean, there's just so much horrible things and mean things going on in the world. And this is not goodbye. This is just until we meet again or until I record and drop another episode. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I've enjoyed creating it. Check me out on social media. Tinfro is reading on Instagram, TV Food Wine Girl on Twitter. And Tinfro is reading the book club. I hope to get into a better state of mind as we recover as a nation from just the tragic happenstance of the last several weeks. And again, I admonish you to be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Be the action that you want to be. If you want kindness, give kindness, exude kindness, and just love yourself and love others. And again, thank you for listening. Mike Beats.